Right people, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to share you my thought on, on DPF regeneration on BMW uh, 330D M Sport 2008 model engine is N57. Okay, first thing first is that uh, on my own personal experience, what I have found that providing your EGR thermostat is working, your main engine thermostat is working, allowing the engine temperature to be built up to around about 90 degrees Celsius, which is its normal operating temperature. Also that your glow plugs are working um, and your glow plug module, control module is functioning because there's a common problem with that. Um, the soldering uh, within the seal unit comes off due to the vibration from the engine and also that you have above quarter tank fuel the regeneration process should happen and it would happen anytime regardless of if you're driving on the motorway at high speed or you're driving around on local road or you park up idling on a uh, car park and the simple reason why I say this is today, for example, I was at one of the super store doing shopping. My wife went out. She did all the shopping. I sat in the car waiting for her just to sort of minimize the, the number of people going into the uh, store. Left the car idling. She took about a good 10, 15 minutes. The engine temperature reach, reached around about, say, 85 degrees Celsius. And guess what? As I'm driving back home, again it's local road, 30 mile per hour speed, I see blue smoke coming out of the back of the car. Approximately, it lasted approximately, I'd say about two to three minutes. Push come to shove, say five minutes, but it wasn't as long as that, to be dead honest with you. Yes, I could smell some kind of burning, plastic burning type of smell. I might be wrong, the, the, you know, I may be sort of. Um, describing this sense of smell differently to what it should be but that's what I felt basically now the G regeneration did take place and it was around about 30 mile per hour the engine temperature was in the region of 80 85 degrees Celsius okay now as I said providing that those issues you, you, you got your glow plug working, your EGR thermostat, your main engine thermostat, the glow plug modules working, quarter, quarter tank above. You know, I normally don't let my marker, fuel marker go below quarter tank because you're taking all the crap off the bottom of the tank. Particularly when you're going climbing, going uphill basically, you will be sort of uh, taking in a lot of crap from the underside under, under of the tank basically. So I always keep my fuel in the region of half a tank. Not full tank, I used to do that but you're carrying excessive fuel. Does it really matter? Maybe not. But I, I try my best to keep it between half a tank and three quarter. In between that range and then not to allow the fuel gauge to go near or maybe just about near quarter tank but not below quarter tank. Okay, so so the myth about high speed and you've got to go on the motorway and and get it blasted off and all this and that, yeah, that 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 may sound okay, but for me on my vehicle, it's perfectly normal for it to poop, which I I call the D the the, the DF, DPF regeneration as the car's pooping. That's that's what I say. You know, when I look at the smoke coming out, whoa, brilliant. So so combination of all that being in place and working the regeneration took play will take place on on a 330d m spot 2008 model e90 n57 engine the regeneration will happen at any time given okay it does not mean that you have to be on a high speed on a motorway building up the temperature the temperature will build itself up providing that your thermostats are functioning properly um, and the glow plug does play a major factor in the regeneration as well, as well as the fuel. So I know I'm repeating myself, but just to clarify one or two things, okay, you don't need to bash your car on the motorway and, and, and destroy your gearbox or your engine, revving it three and a half a thousand, four thousand rev right, third leave you on a third gear right, okay? 
I almost busted my engine listening into all that shit, to be quite honest with you. And that was about a year ago. Okay? I didn't realise that the oil is gone. You know, the thing about service inside of it is don't listen to the manufacturer because they talk through their ass, basically. You know, and particularly BMW, when they say it's 12,000 and it's due in 12,000, for somebody who's doing local run like I do, it'll take me two years before I reach 12,000. So, I understand the guideline. What they're saying is this, it's 12,000 or one year, whichever comes first, I understand that. But it's a definite no-no. I recommend all BMW enthusiasts to change the oil around about every 6,000. And no more than that, regardless of if it's one year or 6,000. One year or 6,000. So make sure if you follow that routine, you're not going to bust your engine. You're not going to have stem seal problems. You're not going to have bearing problems. You're not going to have this and that, so and so forth. Okay? So, basically, the, the, the referring to the comment what I made that I almost destroyed my engine is because the oil have gone off. I didn't know that. And it was nearly 18 months. And it's my stupidity and I own it. You know, it's not BMW's mistake or someone else's mistake. I should have... Someone... BMW will give you references, but you've got to use your brain. I should have used my brain, okay? So I thought 12,000 doesn't reach. It's gone, you know, I'll wait for the mileage to sort of reach, and then oil's okay, everything's okay. But actually, it wasn't. The oil's gone off. It was nearly 18 months, and it's gone off. So guess what happens? I get a DPF sign on my thingy. Dash half half DPF sign. So if you if you know the symbol, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. Uh, the DPF box with little bit of dots right halfway across. Okay, so I take it out for a spin. Subject to uh, the, the these 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 uh, guys are saying thrash it on third gear. Take it up to three and a half a thousand. Take it out for a 15 20 mile ride in there and back in the DPF will clear. Well, guess what? The DPF didn't clear. And guess what? What also? I started getting a ticking noise from the front, 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 front right hand side of the engine. So, thankfully, a very knowledgeable um, and an experienced mechanic friend of mine who have said the first thing to do is change your oil, get rid of and put fresh oil. And I am 90% sure that knocking noise will, that clicking or tapping noise will go away. It seems to be there seems to be a some form of hydraulic tensioner for 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 the belt or cam belt or something like the chain within the engine something like that he said to me from I can remember from the top of my head so luckily for me I listened to him put fresh oil in thankfully the ticking noise had gone away okay when I said ticking it, it was it was a knock noise knocking noise from from you know the side side on, on the front right hand side of the engine basically or it was near enough that side basically okay so Don't thrash your car listening to uh, these advices that you, you've, you've got it. You've got to sort of, uh, you know, you, you can clear the DPF. Yeah, absolutely. The car, these diesel car. The reason why the DPF builds up is is on mostly for local run, and 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 you're not allowing the temperature build up because the car is not on a high rev and high thing. But remember, remember this, okay? Look at the logic side of it, okay? It's a six-speed transmission. Now, the newer cars are eight-speed transmission. So the, the E90 is a six-speed transmission. Even if you're doing uh, 70, 80, it's only hitting about two and a half, two thousand 2,000 rev. Right? So if you're on a long run, like say you go in London, and you take it for a long run, you can't be expected to drive on a third gear 200 miles, right? And revving about three and a half, revving the ass of that car, basically, um, and and expect the, the, the DPF to regenerate. That's not going to happen. Most people won't even do that. They'll just drive on and drive on, and, and the rev, uh, you know, on a, on a six six speed transmission, uh, I think about two and a half a thousand at around about 80 miles per hour. So, the, 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 how does the regeneration happen? You've got to be over three and a half a thousand rev. You've got to thrash the car. You've got to do this. No. The way it's going to happen is your glow plugs are working. Your glow plug module's working. The Both of the thermostats are working. You're, you have at least a above quarter tank fuel. I would say about half a tank fuel. That and, and you can drive around locally just like I did today. 
and it regenerated. So what I've done is after it regenerated, never to shut down the vehicle when it's regenerating. Don't panic. Let it, let it, let it, let, let it spend, burn all the suit out basically. And then what I did is I took it out for a, a, about, I'd say roughly about four miles on the highway, just, just, just on a high rev. Okay, not three and a half. Just I drove normally. Okay, just, just let it all clear out basically. So that's all. That's all you need to know to regenerate your BMW. Make sure those critical parts are functioning. It, the engine will build its temperature up and regeneration will happen, even on a local road. All right, guys, that's all. Look after yourself and I'll catch up in the next video. Bye for now.